adapted from Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Keep your gentle nature so that all people will know what it looks like to walk in God's love. Christ is ever present with us. We need not be anxious. Pray about everything. God longs to hear from us. May we fill our minds with beauty and truth and meditate on that which is honorable, right, pure, loving, and good. May we know the peace of God that is beyond all human understanding and give thanks ever and always to God. Gracious Lord, in this time of worship, open our hearts and minds to your word. Challenge us, comfort us, guide us to be who you have created us to be and to do what you ask us to do. Amen.
Matthew 22, 1 through 14, from The Voice. Jesus went about speaking in parables. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like a king whose son was getting married. The king organized a great feast, a huge wedding banquet. He invited everyone he knew. The day of the wedding arrived and the king sent his servants into town to track down his guests. But when the servants approached them with the king's message, they refused to come. So the king sent out another batch of servants. The king said, tell those people I've invited to come to the wedding banquet. Tell them I have prepared a great feast. Everything is ready. The oxen and fatted calf have all been butchered. The wine is decanted and the table is laid out just so. And off the servants went and they carried the king's message to the errant guests who still paid not a whit of attention. One guest headed into his field to work. Another sat at his desk to attend to his accounts. The rest of the guests actually turned on the servants, brutalizing them and killing them. When he learned of this, the king was furious. He sent his army to kill the murderers and burn their towns. But there was, of course, still a wedding to celebrate. And the king said to his remaining servants, the wedding banquet is ready. But those I invited did not rise to the occasion. So go into the streets and invite anyone you see. Invite everyone you meet. And the servants did just that. They went into the streets and invited everyone they met, rich and poor, good and bad, high and low, sick and well. Everyone who was invited came and the wedding hall practically burst with guests. The king looked around the wedding party with glee, but he spotted one man who was not dressed appropriately. In fact, he was dressed rather plainly in clothes not at all fitting for a fine nuptial feast. The king said, kind sir, how did you get in here without a proper suit of wedding clothes? The man was speechless. He had been invited off the streets after all. Getting no response, the king told his servants, tie him up and throw him out into the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. Matthew's Gospel addresses a community that has come through a significant threat by following Jesus. After the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in 70 CE and withdrawal from the synagogue from which they had been apart, is now separate, it is now a separate com community thriving to define its identity and live into a faithful way of life. A more complicated issue was that the community was finding its way in the world dominated by Roman imperial, imperial rule, ruled through a small elite group and through allegiances with lo local kings and leaders. The Romans controlled political, economic, and military structures to benefit themselves at the expense of others. Imperial theology contributed to this domina domination system. This theology, with appropriate rituals, claimed that Rome and the emperor ruled at the will of the gods. Rome's emperor manifested the gods' presence, will, and benefits on earth. Matthew's Gospel is a is a counter narrative that sought to help his audience live a countercultural alternative existence in the midst of such claims and commitments. 
followers of Jesus did not live in a context of perpetual persecution, but there was always pressure and risk. Christians were to be an active, faithful, alternative community of loving, merciful, inclusive, praying, missional servants, anticipating the completion of God's purposes.
The Reverend Grace in Matthew offers a different perspective on the parable of the wedding banquet found in both Matthew 22 and a shorter version of the parable found in Luke 14, 16 through 24. Reverend Matthew challenges the notion that God is the king in this passage. Rather, the king is one of the rulers in power, if not Herod himself, in this R-rated parable that is about political and personal power. A king has sent out the invitation to his peers and colleagues who chose not to attend. They were busy in their own kingdoms. The king was enraged. He retaliated against his neighbors. And then, since he had prepared the banquet, he sent his servants out into the streets to gather anyone and everyone. Now think about this a minute. If the king of your area put out an invitation to come, the king who had power and authority over you and who had just murdered some of his own contemporaries? Well, I expect you would think twice at turning down the invitation and you would wear the team colors and wave the king's flag to show your support. What if the ones who came to the king's banquet were there because they were terrified not to come? That is, all but one who showed up in regular clothes, an act of resistance, present, and set apart, not buying into the king's way, a silent protest. The kingdom of God is like a stranger willing to stand for justice in an act of resistance against powers and principalities. You come like the lowliest people on earth with humble appearance and no signs of worth. You come as the beggar we pass on the streets who ask for something to drink and to eat. You come as an alien, a stranger and guest, a wanderer seeking compassion and rest. You come with the homeless, the wayward and lost and call us to join you not thinking the cost. Awaken our hearts to your call, strong and sure, that comes to us still in the lives of the poor. God, guide us in making the difficult choice to follow the sound of your beckoning voice.
what are the important places we may be invited to in today's world? Are there places to which we are invited that compromise our beliefs of justice and equality? Are there places we can go that some others cannot go? Okay, now I'm getting personal. As I write this, I think of the privileges I have that are not afforded others. How have I been or how can I be a voice for others who are excluded? How do I stand against the action of powers and principalities that are contrary to my understanding of the teachings of Jesus? Daniel Berrigan has said, the prophet is one who speaks the truth to a culture of lies. Prophetic spirituality is the spirituality of awareness, of course, of choice, of risk, of transformation. It is about the embrace of life, the pursuit of wholeness, the acceptance of others, the call to co-creation. It is a way of living that our eyes wide open and our hearts full of fervor for all of life. It is a spiritual legacy that embodies the commitment of Jesus, the prophet, and the courage of all those seers and gadflies, the insightful and sensitized men and women who come before him to call for the will of God for everyone. It is a call to live not only in praise of God, but in union with God's will for the world. In short, prophetic spirituality is about living out our faith on the streets of the world rather than talking about it. The call to be God's people is new in every age, yet written clearly boldly on all our history's page. How dare we claim that calling with seers and common folk who stood for faith in action and listened when God spoke. We dare because Christ claims and gives us work and skill to make our witness daily responding to God's will. The task is placed before us in dreams to be made real. We find our common calling to teach, support, and heal. So let us join together as God's new people here in partnership and mission, because the call is clear the world awaits the dawning of that long promised day when love shall be the standard that none can take away.
During this time of reflective music, let us in our own words pray for the world and for all who suffer from any need. We thank you, Lord, and praise you for sending to the world Jesus, the Word made flesh, for your presence here in our midst, for making our, wor our world a hallowed place, for giving a human touch to grace. Be with us now as we try to give flesh and meaning to your gospel. Help us translate words into deeds that reach to the depth of human needs. Following your example, God of compassion, God of all. Amen. May the blessing of the Holy One who gives us life, the blessing of the human one who redeems our life, the blessing of the Spirit who enriches our life, be with us all. Amen.